G'day guys, Clinton here from Image Craze coming to you from the Blue Mountains in Australia. For those who don't know where the Blue Mountains is, it's approximately 100 kilometers west of Sydney. Um, today, not a spectacular day, it's the 30th of June 2024 and raining and the temperature is only about 10 degrees. So middle of winter here in Australia, not the best day to get around and get some, uh, some photos. So good day to be inside, showing you some uh, some uh, examples of, of before and after in Dark Table. Back in the office behind the PC. So before and after image. This is obviously the before. Uh, this particular photo uh, taken at about four o'clock in the morning. Uh, a very windy morning this morning. That's why the foliage is very blurry but I thought it would be a good example to show you um, what it actually looks like um, as a before and after uh, in Darktable. Let's flick over to Darktable. So um, where to get Darktable? So darktable.org, you can see that it's, um, it's free, it's open source, um, put together by photographers. Uh, let's just scroll down a little, you can see that uh, this is what the interface looks like you can set it up how you like yourself obviously this is a black background um, it's defaulted to gray i'll show you that when we log into it so scrolling down as i said by photographers bit of blurb there yeah so a substantial community um, there's a forum you can get info on facebook Flickr, twitter and there's a plethora of YouTube videos on dark tables and great content from some Australian creators. So to install, obviously click on the install button. Um, a couple of locations to do that. Just flicking over so you can see it's you can run it on um, on Windows, Mac, or Linux or Linux, depending on how you like to pronounce it. Uh, so let's just go over to Darktable itself. So here's Darktable. Um, this is what it looks like when you first come in. After installing, there's the Lightroom where you can import your images. You can see here I've got some images I've already imported. At the moment I'm not displaying those. So on the right hand side there's a menu, on the left hand side there's a menu. I won't cover off too much. In fact I won't cover off those at all. Uh, just giving you a high level overview right now. You can hide these top and bottom, left and right menus, as you can see. And I'll show you on the bottom, you can hide that as well. So left, you can do the same. Okay, so now this is what it looks like when you first open it up. The mouse is misbehaving at the moment. Okay, so to import images, click add to library. You can navigate anywhere you like as, as per any other application where you're searching to bring files in from your PC. Same as anything else on your PC. You can single click um, and then add to library. You can double click and it'll add to library. You can select the range. You can select, um, hit the control key and select the ones you want. But I won't do that. I've obviously got some in here already. So this image, it's a bit wild, it's very bright, taken, taken in, in um, Queensland and the other side of Brisbane. Uh, very bright, but I thought it would be a good, good example just to show you what you can do in dark tables. So, so if we just, we just hover over these menus, here's a couple of different examples. You can, you can click on the that little icon there you can display by moving the slider over back and forth um, back to one image or multiple so i'm just going to click on this fellow uh, and if i hover over it it shows you that um, your this is the culling layout i'm going to click on the single image now it also shows you that if you toggle between f and basically keep going back and forth on F, you can see it in full screen. So let's go back to our image here. I'm gonna 
Once you've got it displayed here like so, you double click on it. Double click on it and it will open in the dark room. And then on the right hand side, ordinarily, this is where all the sexy stuff happens. So ordinarily, um, when you first come into it, it comes into the quick access panel here as it says. Next one along shows everything you've actually used. So what's been turned on. The next one along is the base tools. The following one is the tone tools. Then the next one along is the color tools. Then the correction tools. And of course, the effects tools. So again, I won't go into all of those. Um, but over here on the left, you can see the history stack. There's different things you can do with the history stack. I'm just going to scroll down a shade. So if I click on the bottom, the original, this shows you what the original is. You can click anywhere in any of these tools where, that you've used to edit. These are what, these are all the edits it shows that I've done to this particular image. So if I click on any of those, it shows me where I where I got to at that point in time and obviously the last one I did was exposure it's a very grainy image this one I'm going to minimize the history stack there is also a way to show very quickly by a slot side swipe um, the before and after won't show that here but that is possible of course so down scrolling down a little oops I just hidden the menu so scrolling down a little you can see I'm currently in the image information let's just move I'll leave myself there uh, currently in the image information so you can see this as I said this was shot on a Z62 this particular one was with the um, the Z lens 24 to 70 that's the kit lens that comes with it an f4 this was shot at f4 not great obviously for um, astrophotography but it's what I had at the time a couple of years back as you can see 22nd of January sorry the 12th 14th of American format the 14th of um, December 2022 get that right and it was shot at um, um, an ISO of 2400 so I'll just scroll down a bit more that's all we've got as far as information goes so I'll minimize that um, now export obviously you choose where you want to export it to on your PC and you can choose the format you want there's a number of different formats um, i've made it very large just now by scrolling so this one was only shot in jpeg so i can only export it in jpeg oh, sorry it was saved in jpeg before so i can only export in jpeg um, plus a couple of other formats as you can see there now obviously you then just click on export and it'll do its magic so that's the dark room if i come back to the light room let me just show you a couple of other images let's just toggle to full screen um, and let's move along with the arrows these are just some other images taken and edited this one here is directly outside our house um, in the backyard not bad uh, Blue Mountains, nice. Okay, so here's the final edited image. And I'll show you that in full screen in a second. This is a black and white taken up at Cahill's Lookout at Katoomba. Uh, this one taken at the Warren Bungles National Park where Siding Springs Observatory is and a number of telescopes um, that are used uh, internationally and locally as well. Official Dark Sky Park. Next one along, that one was quite blurry. It didn't look that way on camera, but I didn't have that. I'm not sure whether that one was not in focus or whether it was because uh, there's a lot of moisture around that night. So could have also got some moisture on the lens doing that as well. So would have benefited from the lens warmer, but I didn't have it out at the time. Okay, so let's just come to full screen on that image. Oops, I've gone too far here we go right so let me know what you think guys that's the edited version let's just click back to the the non-edited version this this the non-edited version very grainy 
can see if I flick over to the edited version, um, being able to bring out the colours in the Milky Way a bit more. It's not grainy anymore. Um, but yeah, not a great image. Blurry. I do need to get out and catch another one like that. Uh, and maybe I'll, um, I'll image stack or I'll focus stack. Uh, not, not too sure. This was taken with the Viltrox lens. This one, the new one, the 1 1.8 uh, 16 millimeter. Got that recently. Really happy with it. Um, I'll cover off some um, subsequent videos and show you what that's like and a bit of a review. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Um, catch you in the next video. If you've enjoyed this, I will show you some more details around my my workflow on editing in Darktable. I'm relatively new to it, but um, I'm able to give you some examples of what I'm doing as I'm going along the learning journey. And um, yeah, so if you like, hit that like button. Stay tuned for some more videos on dark table and a number of other things including here and around the blue mountains um, in australia uh, where i grab some shots here and there both night and day um, pretty much focus a uh, fair, fair fair amount of focus on the um, astrophotography stuff but love photography in general so yeah by all means subscribe if you like um, thanks for watching guys catch you in the next one thanks very much